Parental discretion is advised. Find yourself in the Beachview area of Pittsburgh? Check out the official pizza of this show, Slice on Broadway, sharing an abnormal obsession with pizza we can relate to. Check them out at sliceonbroadway.com and tell them this show sent you. Hey guys, are you enjoying the Wrestling Mayhem Show? Are you finding value in these conversations? Do you want to support it so we can become even bigger? Check out patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show. Want to have your business or podcast featured on the show? Contact us at info at sorgatronmedia.com. Subject line, advertising. Guys, welcome to the Wrestling Mayhem Show, the show where we talk about big time professional wrestling from the week. I'm Mike Sorg, Sorgatron at Sorgatron on the Twitter. Uh, residing here live in Mayhem Studios. I live here. I sleep on the couch, especially when I anger my wife uh, of the show uh, in Pittsburgh, PA. Uh, with me, as usual, is my compatriot from day one and always joined me in the awkward interviews that I listened back to from 2009 where she was Zion. Or I just hate how I interviewed back then. Thank you for joining me through the tough times, Papa Lunchbox. You bet. You bet. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I, uh, I, I don't have a joke for my intro. So oh. I'm just going to say thank you for listening. And uh, uh, thank you for continuing to listening. Yes, through the tough times and the good. And Bobby F. J-Town from Johnstown, PA. Hi, everybody. I'm here again with things to talk about. Why are you guys like so low key? Did you just like like push it all out in the gold this week? It's we been, just it's did motherfucker cast. It's been a really hard few days. Okay. Yes. Okay. There's um, been a lot happening. All right. Uh, uh, back with us. I, hopefully he's got some energy to spare here. Uh, is Joe Dombrowski. Joe-Dombrowski.com. We promised and I screwed up and booked Justin Plummer last week. I'm sorry about that, Joe. Uh, but I wanted to have you back this week so we can have a proper discussion about Wrestle Kingdom 9 and our thoughts on it. Now that everybody's had a chance to watch it here. Well, it just goes to back to what I always say, and that's nobody actually wants to talk to Justin Plummer. It just sort of happens on accident. <laughs> um, but uh, I appreciate uh, your intro, Mr. Sorg, of, of uh, announcing that we'll be talking about uh, big-time professional wrestling. I can only assume you mean uh, the Detroit territory run by the Sheik called Big Time Wrestling, and I'll spend the next hour <laughs> recanting a story about the Sheik and Mark Lewin from Cobo Hall about 1978. If you wow, like. actually, no. Uh, nice. When I was out in California, my uh, my my cousin said, "Oh, I, I was watching Raw," and, and he's like, "You know, I could never really get into that Big Time Wrestling." And I says, "One, I very much appreciate that you refer to it as Big Time Wrestling," <laughs> um, and and it's just been stuck in my head ever since. So I, I do I like the. Um, the territorial uh, 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 titles. Whenever people who watched wrestling before the WWF, depending <laughs> on where they live, they watched big time wrestling, or they watched championship wrestling, or they watched all star wrestling. It was never the name of the company. It was whatever the generic title was. But I am upset that now we don't get to talk about Bobo Brazil. Well, that's a shame. That's a shame. Uh, that could be a whole oh, we other can podcast. Always talk about Bobo. Oh Brazil. yeah, that's true. That's true. How many there times? There is never a bad time to talk Bobo Brazil. We could change one of these discussion topics as we as we go. Well, anyways, uh, you stumble upon us. We're at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. We're at everything that we do. You can subscribe to us on iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, iHeartRadio, and iTunes. Uh, all the links over there at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. You can also please contact us. We talk... We love talking to you. We love you guys talking back at us. 412-206-WMS0 or the email address at... Good times. Good times at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. We got some great stuff. Fuck. What? Okay. Um, and you can also join us here live every Tuesday at 9 p.m. Eastern time at live.sorgatronmedia.com. You can join us in the chat just like... Nope, oh, nope. I'll get this one day. Those guys over there, check them out. Riz is in there. Alex Cars is in there talking with us. And uh, and uh, they, they, they love putting gifts in there throughout the yeah. night. We'll, we'll, we'll work on that through as well. Um, and thank you, everybody, for the feedback. I, I know in the video version, uh, we've been uh, trying to pop up the chat room a little bit more. Uh, we got some suggestions throughout the week. Uh, I know one was uh, throwing things over like this. I pointed the right way this time. Um, so we're going to work on that and, and kind of, uh, you know, as we go here, 
uh, hopefully try to improve the show. And, and thank you for all the feedback on the new uh, the look and everything of the video. And uh, and I invite you if you don't if you're an audio listener go go take a take a peek over at youtube.com/wrestlingmayhemshow and see what we're doing to kind of improve the show visually here uh, in the last few weeks. So with that, also thank you uh, to our bosses over on patreon.com/wrestlingmayhemshow. You guys can do, if you denote denote donate a dollar or more you'll get updates and uh wrestling mayhem show gold including these guys including the motherfucker cast and other uh fun stuff they're trying out over there um as well as uh you know what bobby if we ever get to laundry time i think i'm just gonna put it over there maybe you know that's an idea that's a good idea that's an idea um and of course state of the mayhem you guys uh learn about like a little bit in advance what we're doing including some of the stuff uh about what we're doing with these graphics and why we're doing them and what's coming up as well uh patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show but thanks to our current botches of botches <laughs> our current bosses zero over there wrestling revolution.net the rest the wrestling revolution.com the w revolution on twitter as well as our good friend Bo diggity Woo! Woo! putting their money where their mouth is and supporting the show. Thank you very much to them and everybody else supports the show however they can. Um, so let's get into it. First topic of the week. I definitely wanted us to... I mean, this is the biggest story of the week, I think, so far. Uh, and it's definitely Macho Man... Oh, that's the wrong one. Macho Man Randy Savage is finally yeah. going to be inducted in the Hall of Fame. Dig it. It's true. Dig it. Dig it. First, finally. First of all... Uh, for you guys that, that watched the show there live last night, this was bro- broke uh, earlier in the day. I think TMZ uh, mm-hmm. was cited on the show last night uh, as being who broke the story that it was inspect. And then they said twice on the show that that hey, we are expected to be uh, announcing the induction of. I don't know why they just didn't announce it. That was weird, wasn't it? <laughs> I thought it was going to be like a ruse from the authority or something. We are announcing that we're going to yeah. have an announcement to announce something later. You know, I mean, it just seems so odd, you know. Uh, it, it was like they were they were trying desperately to get people to, like, stay tuned in. Just stay tuned in. We might do it. We might not. <laughs> oh, you don't know if it's going to happen. And, Please and, stay tuned in. And I still fell asleep halfway through. Like, the best part was Michael <laughs> Cole saying, we can now confirm that the Macho Man is going in the Hall of Fame. It was like, you knew! It was a last minute decision uh, or some shit. It's like, would, how would they swerve this? Like, actually, we're going to induct Lanny Poffo. Yeah. I mean, are you, wh- hey, where like would I you said, go with this? Like I said in the Hangout, I watched two Leaping Lanny Poffo matches this week on Primetime Wrestling. <laughs> so you watched you watched the two. I watched the, the two. only two Leaping Lanny Poffo matches. No, Before he's all he over the, the place. Genius. He's all over Before the place in those was- early days. He still did poetry before. There the was match. some random uh, MSG stuff they were playing, or Boston Garden stuff that had some mm-hmm. Lanny Poffo. I was I was very much appreciating. Uh, He's leaping. Uh, Joe Dabrowski. Uh, I mean, you you gonna have some some thoughts on 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 a Macho Man finally getting inducted in the Hall of Fame here? Well, I mean, to say the least, it's long overdue, mm-hmm. um, and I'm. Uh, in full agreement of, of the idiocy of uh, teasing the announcement uh, as they did, it came off very bizarre. But from what I understand, the announcement was specifically there was a ratings play uh, based on how they performed the past couple of weeks mm-hmm. and their fear over uh, uh, whatever the hell sports game was on last national week. championship. Yeah. Um, so uh, you know they were they were concerned about uh, uh, hitting into that you know lowest rating since 1997 territory. Um, a few things I'm curious about. I'll be curious to see if Randy Savage is the headline act, for lack of a better term, at the Hall of Fame ceremony. Obviously, um, it creates a little bit of a downer, a little bit of an anticlimactic environment when he's not physically there to accept. Um, so I'll be curious to see if there's another uh, uh, headliner, so to speak, uh, that goes along with him. Um interested to see if uh, there's any recognition of the other family members, uh, Lanny mm-hmm. Poffo, as you mentioned, and uh, Angelo Poffo as well, uh, who were very instrumental, uh, certainly didn't have the career or the pageantry of Randy Savage, but had had great careers in their own right. And obviously the genius, the, the genius the, had pageantry. 
<laughs> well, he did. He, he had he had some pizzazz. He had some hitch in his giddy up for sure. He had a nice mortar board too. But uh, genius, uh, uh, you know. And before that is Leaping Lenny Poffo, Angelo Poffo, even going down to the the ICW territory down in uh, Kentucky back when they were running opposition to the Jarretts back in the the early '80s, the '70s. Um, they've done a lot of great things. If you believe the internet, that or or, or I, maybe Lanny's come out and said that. I think Lanny's come out and said this himself. You believe Lanny? Uh, uh, a big holdup for a lot of years was uh, the desire to have the whole Popo family mm-hmm. inducted together like the Von Erichs were. Uh, so I'll be curious to see that. Um, and also, uh, if there's a year to ever do it, maybe some recognition for Miss Elizabeth as yep. well. That's I what I was thinking. Too. Mm-hmm. Um, I would love to see uh, uh, really mm-hmm. any excuse to play that uh, that wedding song together mm-hmm. back in the early 90s. <laughs> Um, but I'm happy that the Poffo family and, and, and Randy is getting this acknowledgement and recognition and that he is no longer unofficially, I don't know if I'd say erased from history, uh, uh, per se, but, but definitely downplayed mm-hmm. in recent years. And it's, it's high time that stops because not only does Randy deserve it, but there's so much he did that no one's doing now that these young kids can look at and learn from. Right. Right. It really feels like um, I, I saw an article today about um, they updated a list of uh, Royal Rumble participants and a number of which who are uh, current Hall of Famers updated, mm-hmm. with, of course, with Macho Man's announcement um, and how that kind of uh, there was a significant drop after 1992. Um, does this kind of complete our our <laughs> does this complete the set? of the most influ- influential people through the uh, the 80s, I would say, yeah, at this point? I would say the 80s. I mean, is there, any, well, is there anybody else significantly missing from the 80s as far as wrestling goes in your minds? Mm. Big Boss Man? <laughs> but uh, significant. I, I mean, not, that, not to call really? Big yeah. Boss Man insignificant. And no, I think he, he should be somebody that goes in there. Uh, Hacksaw Jim Duggan, for instance, was mentioned yeah. a couple of times very weirdly last night, which got me thinking a little right. bit. He's not in there yet. No, oh, yeah. I think he deserves it. You know. Yeah. Um, He's in there. Is he in there? Yes, he is. Oh. Oh. Yeah. I, um, yeah, I'm, I'm looking now because I can't remember who's in it. Yeah, I can't I was going to say Big John Studd, but he's in there. Yeah, probably the most glaring example, possibly the British Bulldogs. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Wait, I thought... The yeah, British Bulldogs not in. Or or Dynamite Kid, I don't think so, neither. Is Brett and Owen are in? Wait, is Owen in? Owen's, Owen's not, not in. Owen's not, not in. in. Not Eddie in went in. Um, Brett's in now, so I don't see why we wouldn't do Owen. Um, I, 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 I uh, his ex-wife is is it is there that still a glaring issue? Is she still making a lot of noise? I there? I don't know if it's as much of an issue as it was, but I don't think there's ever going to be a point where it's not a sore mm. spot. But that's a shame. That's a, that's a really it big is. shame. It is. Um, I, I think we've seen the last of of I guess the major cogs of the '80s into the early '90s, but I don't think that we've seen the last of um, <clears throat> Freebirds. Freebirds haven't gone in yet. Oh, yeah. Right. Uh, Rock right. and Roll Express, Midnight Express with Jim Cornette. I don't know why they're ignoring all the teams. Um, Magnum TA is not in there either, is he? Magnum TA is, is not in there. Um, he would. I don't know that he would be very high up on their list, but uh, for all intents and purposes, he should be. Um, Wahoo McDaniel. Um, you know, I, I, they've got the, the, the main cogs they want. They have the mainstream, uh, talents. Um, Virgil. we'll see. <laughs> yeah, you're right. You know, I, I think we'll see more skewed toward the nineties and the two thousands as far as uh, a lot of the, the majority of the entrance, but they'll still be space for, I mean, you can go uh, prior to the eighties. If WWE really wants to be a legitimate hall of fame, uh, where's Lou Thez? Where is Sam Mushnick? Where is uh, Strangler Lewis? All these guys that, that names don't mean anything to the modern fan. Mm-hmm. But if you want to have a legitimate, complete Hall of Fame, you need to acknowledge Jeez. them. Sonny. Um, Sonny's in the Hall of Fame. Yeah. What yeah. About Earth- I can't believe Lou Thez isn't in there. What about Earthquake? Uh, I don't think he is. Earthquake's not in. No, Earthquake's not in. Um, Natural Disasters. There you go. <laughs> 
<laughs> I, I, I could see Earthquake, Gil Gazino, of course, is in there. Um, mm-hmm. and, and you can think, you know, like, some of these guys, would they have been put in, you know, if there weren't guys that passed, you know, in some cases, you know. Uh, unfortunately, I, I unfortunately, the case may be that Macho Man wouldn't have gone this year if he hasn't, hadn't passed in the last few years, you know, mm-hmm. um, which is really unfortunate. Uh, I think, uh, as far as a mainstream name, uh, Hulk Hogan's probably the right guy to do it. I, but mm-hmm. I'm under, you know, who's going to accept? Probably Lanny Poffo is going to accept. For him, but I think I think Hogan's going to be the bigger. If he even wants to be, what's that? If he even wants to be involved in the whole thing, right? No, he said he he said he he he's actually approved them doing this, so okay, I'm thinking okay. he will be involved. That's good that they, they've worked out a deal. Uh, you know that that that's good. Uh, how many years before they just go ahead and put Triple H in it? You know, he's the guy from that one era that that isn't yeah. in there. Um, it'd be a little. I don't know. It'd it'd be, it'd be interesting uh, to, to to do that. Uh, I don't see Hunter going in um, anytime soon no. unless Vince mandates it for the same reason that Vince isn't putting Vince in mm-hmm. uh, to where that would seem a little too self-glorifying. Vince doesn't uh, go in until Vince retires or dies. Or dies. Yeah. So, yeah. so so, in other words, never. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, also, there's that indicator that, oh, okay, we're in the Hall of Fame now, so it's kind of over. Like, I think um, – uh, Jerry Lawler was hesitant to be inducted because he felt that that meant he was done, you know, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. like he's done all he's going to do. Booker's in there, right? Yes. yes. Yeah. So Is Terry Funk. Yeah. Terry Funk's Funk. In the Funks yeah. came. The yeah. Funks went in together. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Was a kind of odd distinction there. Um, but you know, I think there's a few others that, that could go in King Kong Bundy, WrestleMania two, of yes. course. Um, um, geez, I'm, I'm, I'm running through WrestleMania main events. <laughs> Rick Rude is not in the Hall of Fame. Bam Bam Bigelow, to be honest. Um, yeah. I mean, he's he had a significant part. Had, he had a high-profile match in, in one of the weaker years. Um, yeah. You know. Uh, it was the main event. It was the main it? event uh, of 11, yeah. right? Um, yeah. I mean, they're very significant. So, uh, I, I don't know. It's uh, But still, it, it does feel like they're – but they're not – as glaring, definitely as, as Macho Man, and it'll be interesting to see where they go from there because it feels like they've really kind of completed uh, up through the '90s, <laughs> as as far as uh, uh, you know, significant people going in there. Uh, so, so we'll see where it goes, uh, how it takes shape, uh, kind of going on from now. Uh, I don't think there's going to be a lot of location-based inductees because it, it sounds like there's not a lot coming from California. Um, there was, I know I was reading some stories uh, a couple months ago about them, uh, trying to find, I guess there'll probably be some of those lower names they may stick in there, uh, that were perhaps from territories in the California area, um, or West coast, um, perhaps. So I don't know. It'll be interesting to see what happens. Mm -hmm. I have a question. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's basically the same question except for celebrity inductees because they like to have one of those each year. Oh yeah. Um, Who do we think? Miss Piggy. Is Bob Barker in there? No. He should. Yeah, he'd be a good one. He should. Why not? I mean, he did good. enough. He did a lot of fun yeah. stuff. Um, you know, I think he can get a little more recent. Um, Elvira. Can we get Elvira? Pamela Anderson, you know? Um, <laughs> Arnold Schwarzenegger. Or Jamie yeah. McCarthy. I, honestly, yeah. I think Arnold Schwarzenegger. Arnold, yeah, if, he would, if he would do it, yeah. He, he would be. Oh, I think he would. I think he certainly would. And, and I'm sure he has some movie to promote. Yeah. So, because <laughs> where the Drew, or, Drew Carey did, Drew Carey's in there, isn't he? Yeah, he is. And he had like some yeah. kind of uh, pay per view special or HBO special to promote at the time. So it was kind of like, ah, uh, okay. Um, so, I mean, that's Jeremy, th- Jeremy Piven. Jeremy Piven. <laughs> Jeremy Piven. Hugh Jackman. Hugh Jackman. Please. Hugh Jackman, would be Hugh Jackman good, should man. definitely be That'd in be there great. for for a couple of things he'd done. Hey, you got to think, anybody that's in there has only done a couple of things with WWE F. Seth know. Green. Um, I think Bob, you, Seth Green could be could be in there, yeah. but like guys like that, I think you wait a little bit longer for a Seth yeah, Green. He's yeah. he's too young, but yeah, sure. sure, I guess he's been around forever. So I don't know. <laughs> but Bob Barker, let's get Bob Barker. Just yeah, because it's I, Bob, I Bob, Barker. Bob Barker. Come on, how's he sure. doing? Or well, he's still alive and can accept it. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Jay Leno. <laughs> No, no. <laughs> Considering no. how much they threw him under the bus on Monday Night Wars, Jay Leno, Vince Russo. <laughs> I would rather have Ted Turner inducted than Jay Leno. 
my thoughts on that. Oh, I don't know about that. Oh, David Arquette. There you go. Former David WCW champion, champion. champion from Dota Garza. <laughs> so he'd go into the regular Florida, Hall of Fame. <laughs> Florida Georgia line. No. I was so glad no. I waited until it was on network to watch the Salute to the Troops because I could hey. skip all the Georgia and Florida line songs. Question. Yes. Question. Yes. Can we get Flo Rida inducted so we don't have to hear any more of his music? During yes, that means he's done. God. <laughs> Please. All right. <clears throat> Moving on, moving on. Other big news. Returning to the ring this week. You thought it would never happen or you knew better. Uh, Daniel Bryan returns to the ring on SmackDown. Uh, the big return to SmackDown, of course. Uh, I'm sorry, the big return for SmackDown to Thursday nights. Thursday? If you, if you haven't figured that out by now. It's a new day, new Bobby. Day. It's a new day, <laughs> Bobby. New day. It's a new day, but it's kind of like the old day. It's Fluffy bunnies. <laughs> Fluffy bunnies. Fluffy um, little bunnies. Bobby, what do you think about Daniel Bryan returning this week? Although I just saw the chronicle I, of his entire recovery process in my in my binge of Total Divas over the last two weeks. I think they should have. I, I I know what they're doing for ratings for mm-hmm. SmackDown. They want to push that first SmackDown on Thursday night so everybody knows where it's at. But I think they should have waited to announce him and held it off for the rumble. Could you imagine that pop of his music hitting and him coming out and none of us knowing yeah. that he was coming out? Yeah, That would have been, been one of the curse. best moments in, in a Royal Rumble in years. And they kind of just like said, hey, Daniel Bryan's coming back. Yeah, mm-hmm. here, here he is. I mean, it, it was good they announced it, but I, I wanted that like surprise entrant that we almost never get any. Like we got with John Cena that one year. Yeah. When you're like, and, oh, he and might Edge. miss WrestleMania. And then all of a sudden, bam, he's here. And everybody was sad. <laughs> Except for Lunchbox. <laughs> no, we were excited because that was the one we went to yeah. New York for. So we were like, oh, yeah. my God. Like, our, yeah, we were we were pretty into it, if I recall. So, um, and we got Batista. Uh, Joe Dombrowski, what do you think about Daniel Bryan coming back after a, a kind of a scary, scary run there with an injury? Um, I personally agree with the timing. I think they need to do whatever they can to get the eyeballs onto mm-hmm. SmackDown and revitalize that brand, which has very definitively settled into a B show, mm-hmm. um, even more so than it, it always was when they were trying to pretend it wasn't. Um, it's very dangerous to do, um, to have Daniel Bryan as a surprise, in my opinion. Number one, you have a, a very good possibility that, that you are pissing away money if you do that. Yeah. And, and yeah. that's the big problem with, with why your surprises are always going to be Hacksaw Jim Duggan and the Honky Tonk <laughs> Man or Michael Cole getting up from ringside or whatever. The JBL. <laughs> exactly. Because, um, you know, people were going to pay last year to see Batista come back. People are going to pay this year to see Daniel Bryan come back. Yeah. The other dangerous thing, if Daniel Bryan is a surprise and he does not win that match, yeah. <laughs> um, I don't know that there will be quite the groundswell of Venom that there was last year. <laughs> um, there was a lot of Venom last year. <laughs> yeah, so, so We were there. What do you do at that point? That's that's so difficult. But I, I you know, SmackDown's the long term brand. SmackDown is is what they need to pay attention to. And I'm just happy for I'm happy for Brian that he's able to come back and and do what he loves. And you can sense um in just the way he carries himself, that down to earth, humble, um you know, uh, uh, work ethic that he's had this entire time. And it's not um, you know, it, it's, it's not back for ego and it's not back for, for glory. It's back for, um, you know, uh, the love of the business and, and, and you know, this is the life that, that he knows. So, right. um, I don't know, you know, a year ago at this time, I would have sat here and told you what the right thing to do with Daniel Bryan is. I don't know what that is now. Mm-hmm. Um, do you try to repeat history? Can you repeat history? Should you repeat history? And even if you concede that you shouldn't, uh, what's the better plan? So that's what I'm going to uh, be eagerly watching to see unfold. Hey, what about you, LB? 
Um, I, I agree that it would have been a really fun surprise, but I also understand that, you know, got to have ratings, got to have buys. It's a very tumultuous time for pay-per-views right now for the WWE. They're still trying to get their network numbers up. Um, so they're doing everything they can to make that happen. Um, I think it's great. I'm, I'm glad Daniel Bryan's back. He's always been great in the, in the ring. And uh, he just all of his matches are a pleasure to watch. But that being said, uh, someone brought this up uh, during Raw last night, and uh, it's something that I had been saying before um, before he got injured. Was uh, Daniel Bryan is world class in the ring, uh, but on the mic he is dull. <laughs> He's really kind of boring on the ring. He doesn't say anything interesting or in an interesting way. Um, I mean, he's not nearly as bad as Roman Reigns yeah. and the fact that he's doing these promos while Roman Reigns is out there terrorizing us. Um, mm-hmm. He's still going to look good in comparison. But that being said, I feel like he needs to um, adjust his mic work to be a little more interesting. Mm-hmm. But I'm glad he's back. Okay. Okay. He's still got the, he's still got the, 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 the natural people behind him, Daniel Bryan. Um, so it's good to see that, and we'll see if that's still. I, and I think that's what WWE is probably going to do a little bit these next few weeks, and see if that's still quite as strong as when he left before they kind of roll with it. So yeah. um, I, I would say that I'm interested to see whether he's like lost a step or if he's got any ring rest. But I mean, and also, I severely and doubt it. And also see what he has adjusted to whatever his issue was in the long run. Um, well, he was he was doing flying around the ring pretty quick during when he was like beating him up. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, Kano, so. But still, like seeing, you know, what what is that the ring style? Is it going to be as full throttle as it was for a bit that got us into it? Um, really, uh, when you see him mix it up with a Seth Rollins, see see if that that's the same tempo that it used to be, you know. So um, it'll be very interesting to watch. Very interesting to watch here over the next few weeks. So also very interesting. Uh, putting some clothes on your back, supporting uh, uh, the wrestlers you love. And the podcast that you love, and uh, the promotions that you love, actually, ProWrestlingTees.com. You can uh, uh, support uh, us, the Wrestling Mayhem Show, starting your your, your journey at ProWrestlingTees.com slash WMS. Of course, we got some great designs over there. The Good Times of Wrestling Mayhem Show dot com T-shirt, the Property of Mayhem, great designs by the great Alex Cars, who joins us here every week in the chat room and on Twitter, always always talking with us. And uh, power to the Smarks. Um, on the Twitter as well, um, and uh, of course the the logo and everything. Uh, you can you can support a little bit of that goes into uh, the show here at the Wrestling Mayhem Show and Sorgatron Media. But while you're there, also support other. But CM Punk, hey, he's not gone. Well, he's gonna get punched <laughs> in the face for real here pretty soon at the UFC. Uh, but he's got T-shirts over there. Uh, Macho Man Randy Savage, uh, that's gonna be a big thing. Check out his stuff. Steve Austin has merchandise over there. Uh, you can put that in the core Bullet Club if you're uh, uh, into New Japan Pro Wrestling, and I don't think a lot of us are. We're going to talk about in a moment here. And uh, but you can go in there, and a lot of the indie guys, um, a lot of even TNA guys. Uh, very independent of anything else. Kind of the bigger names, like we said, a lot of Hall of Famers, Ted DiBiase, Scott Hall. But if you go down here, guys that we've had on the show, guys we're interviewing later tonight, we're going to be talking with DJ Z, Zima Ion from TNA. Uh, he's got a shop on here. So those guys like Chris Saban, uh, hell, China's on here. Uh, Dustin Rhodes, I wonder who that is. He, he apparently still has a shop on here. Tugboat, you mentioned earlier. <laughs> yeah! Uh, you can support Tugboat. tugboat Funaki, uh, Gregory Iron, another great guy. Friend, of, I know Joe Dabrowski knows him very well. Uh, working up in Prime and, and 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 otherwise, Jimmy Jacobs, Johnny Gargano, Kamala, Kenny Omega. Some of you guys may know who that yeah. is now. Uh, but uh, go check that all that out. But start Question. your journey over there, prowrestlingtees.com slash WMS. So Question. Joe Dabrowski, glad you you could come on here week out. We've all settled in. We've let uh, America's first major Big time wrestling take on uh, New Japan Pro Wrestling kind of sink in here. Uh, so, so yeah, I'll first go with you. Your thoughts here. Uh, uh, oh, oh, I almost forgot. I'm sorry. I'd be remiss if I didn't include this guy in here. Uh, <laughs> we're gonna let DJ Lunchbox uh, bow out here for a moment. But I definitely, and we've we've kind of mentioned a little Bye, bit. Bye, everybody. Bye. <laughs> it's, Bye. Like, it's like um, around the horn when somebody. <laughs> 
<laughs> right, right. Eamon. No, that's not Eamon. That's Mad Mike. This is the wrong one. Eamon. There he is. No, that's not it either. We'll find him. We'll find him. I got your graphic. I just, I just, we'll, we'll, we'll get you figured out here. Uh, Eamon from, uh, joins me on the Indie Mayhem show is joining us here. Um, and his video is much, much different than LB, so we'll adjust that here in a second. Um, but I know he's got a lot of opinions and actually knew way more about Japanese wrestling than I did going into this. Uh, but uh, but uh, Joe Dabrowski, uh, you saw Kingdom, uh, I'm sorry, Wrestle Kingdom. You filled us in on it uh, going into it. Uh, what did you think of how the show came out? I'd like to first say I'm salty that you didn't plug my pro wrestling tease store. <laughs> oh, you are you on there now? I, Dude, I've been on there for like a year. <laughs> Why don't I know Could that? I? Wait, 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 wait. Yeah, I... Is that where the Montreal Theory shirts are that I just plugged over the holiday are? Uh, that is one of the locations, okay. <laughs> yes. You can buy them from joe-dombrowski.com or from Pro Wrestling Tees. Could go. I buy one of, one of Tugboat shirt and then wear one of Joe's shirts over top of it? That's a beautiful plan. I think Everybody you can do all those things, yeah. Um, I all, I'm also selling the Resolution 6 commemorative illustrated uh, uh, shirt, which is based on the poster over my shoulder right now. Um, so you guys can check out and buy that. Uh, um, before you buy a Wrestling Mayhem shirt, piece of apparel. Hey, buy them hey, both, hey, but hey, buy hey. mine first as, as, a, as a way to make amends. They can share and the buy card. buy Tugboat and wear... Tugboat's and also video. support Tugboat, um, <laughs> who still has the Shockmaster helmet. And just for that reason alone, I think he deserves <laughs> your support for having to carry that around for 20 years. Support Uncle Fred. So, <laughs> <sighs> I'm getting to my dust the road for now, baby. Oh, um, no. <laughs> Wrestle Kingdom 9. Hey, that was a show. Um, I, I, I very much enjoyed uh, Wrestle Kingdom 9. I you know, you have reservations going in when you know a show is four hours long mm -hmm. and a lot of the talent you're not familiar with. Mm -hmm. um, but I can honestly say this show didn't drag. Um, it reminded me, in a sense, of a lot of the more classic, well-remembered earlier WrestleManias in the sense that um, every match had a different feel to it. Every match had a different dynamic to it or a different stipulation or a different issue. And um, it, it flowed very well, and, and, and every match stood out for separate positive reason, and it didn't take away from anything. Um, you had just enough pageantry and just enough um, sizzle to the steak, as Jim Ross would say, um, to, to, to let you know you're watching something big and you're watching something special, but it didn't take away. Um, you know, we didn't cut away to a 10 minute uh, P. Diddy concert and we didn't, uh, <laughs> you know, we didn't uh, have an endless uh, video package, although the packages they did have for some reason were in Japanese language with Japanese subtitles. I didn't get what that accomplished, but be that as it may, um, you know, they, they, they gave you a feel uh, uh, of the issues, though. They gave you a feel of what was going on. And um I'm a fan. That was the first New Japan show I'd watch start to finish. And um, if there is another one, uh, I'll definitely be watching that because there was there was something for everybody. And uh, I hope a lot more fans get turned on to it because from what I've been seeing on Twitter and Facebook, it's 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 rejuvenating uh, mm -hmm. a lot of people's fandom in wrestling. I was really surprised at the number of, like, I knew some of these guys. I knew the Young Bucks were involved with Bullet Club. I knew AJ Styles. I knew Jeff Jarrett was going to be there. Uh, uh, Luke Gallows, for instance. Uh, but some of the guys, like like seeing uh, Alex Shelley was teamed up with, uh, well, I, I'm sorry, I'm not going to know any of these guys' names, um, with one of the guys out there. Um, His name is Kushida. <laughs> of course, Red <laughs> Dragon was there. Kel O'Reilly with Bobby Fish. Bobby Fish we're very familiar with with IWC. Um, familiar. What's that? All too familiar in some cases. Yeah, 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 a little bit. Um, you know, it, it, it was good to see, like, there was enough going on there. And, and, and I felt for me, um, having JR, having Matt Stryker, and I love, uh, you know, Matt Stryker was always the wrestling historian, you know, and, and even he's admitted yeah. in, in interviews, like, to a fault sometimes, and he thinks maybe that's why he had problems with WWE, right? Um, he was a smart fan behind the mic, it felt like, and he's the perfect guy to fill me in on Lucha Underground, on this, you know, and paired with JR was just fantastic, because it felt like, like, at certain points, certainly, uh, Matt Stryker was teaching JR about, about New Japan wrestling. Yeah, exactly. you know, though, I 
I mean, uh, though Jr. didn't seem like a slouch, and a, like he's definitely did his studying up and, and talked about some guys that he 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 knew about in <laughs> advance and everything. Um, my favorite my favorite thing with the pay per view was Jr. Every time he'd say like, "I had breakfast with uh, uh, whoever this morning," and they they said this, I was like. Yeah, that's what JR pretty much would know them from just breakfast in the morning. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, so I mean, it, it was it was a, a great introduction. Um, I, I love the presentation that it wasn't they didn't cover anything up. It was basically we got the Japanese feed with their audio, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, thankfully, uh, uh, Japan's a very uh, you know slightly Americanized and multilingual kind of culture to begin yeah. with um that that we do have a little at least their names are in english for instance and at least in the characters we recognize um so so at least there's a little bit of connection there and a little bit of familiarity um but just the mixture you know it wasn't just all quick high flying there's some some clips on this video this highlight video i'm running right now of kind of the bigger uh pounding guys that were involved in this and i think uh, i forget who was saying that they uh, i think it was Ch- chachi and somebody else uh, uh said that they skipped that match actually Bob, I did. bobby it was you and we're yeah, like no skipped. you need to watch that match yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I i skipped the two big guys the one with the big chain Mm-hmm. Uh, cause just because I was short on time and I wanted to get to the Nakamura match, right? Because right. I heard things about Nakamura, and I'm glad I did because Nakamura is like my favorite Japanese wrestler now. <laughs> it was tremendous. Like the the hard hitting stuff was hard hitting. The high flying stuff was over yeah. the top. It was just the, it was just everything was was it was a great mixture of everything. The two MMA guys, I wasn't sure of their names. That was a fantastic match. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I loved that match. And Those that's the other thing. Like, put it on the line, too. It was a good story with it, too. And a lot going into a lot of this uh, uh, definition uh, uh, about uh, how these guys, like, pretty much go, it seems, back to forth between legit MMA and wrestling mm-hmm. over there. Like, that's just that's just normal for, for, for guys in this culture. Um, mm-hmm. Well, I think, well, Bob, uh, help me out, uh, 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 Joe, Bobby Fish is legit. He did MMA over in Japan, right? Um, from what I understand, yeah, and he also has a, a history over there in, in professional wrestling uh, yeah. with Noah before New Japan. Uh, I mean, uh, their culture has always had more of a presentation of, of wrestling as a sports-oriented type of deal. Um, you know, uh, a lot of people credit, uh, you know, guys like Anoki with sort of being mixed martial artists before the term even existed. You know, going back to Anoki versus Muhammad Ali back in the 70s. Um, and I think there are elements of that that uh, the American companies can definitely learn from and take from uh, a little bit of an MMA influence, not to, to the extent where we're, we're doing uh, MMA under the, the guise of pro wrestling, but uh, a little bit of that, just just the way it feels, just the grittiness and the physicality and, and the rawness and the realness um to where people can buy into it and and we're not you know we're not mounting the turnbuckle and punching the guy in the head 10 times anymore Mm -hmm. that that stuff is passe as much as it has its place for certain audiences that's not what's going to grab the mainstream um and 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 you know to your point earlier it's it's not just that because you had the loud characters you had you know the guys who just just oozed star power like kenny omega um, you had uh, Nakamura. Nakamura and Kota Ibushi, my personally, probably my favorite match of that event. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and you know, I, I appreciate Nakamura more every single time I see him. I, I don't know that I truly understood how great he was when I had the chance to work with him last year mm-hmm. um, uh, up in Windsor. But I, I remember... Um, you know, this is my first. Uh, I was my first taste of Nakamura and Okada and 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 Tanahashi, with the exception of you know any uh, American stuff they may have done on excursion. And I remember going up to Alex Shelley at that Border City show when it was uh, it was New Japan versus Border City last May, and and not just because I, I, I've I've uh, you know I've known Alex since I was a dumb kid back in in, in IWC, and I've grown to greatly appreciate not just his his ring performance. Um, but also his mind, and it, it didn't hurt that he was the only New Japan guy that spoke fluent English. So I went up to Alex Shelley, and I, I, I told him, listen, I got the stats, I got the info. What can you tell me, Alex Shelley, about characters? And when I brought Nakamura's name, all Shelley had to say, and it, it, it rings so true, the only thing I can tell you about Nakamura, 
he's a rock star. <laughs> and that's a hundred percent fact. And, and you get that. He just, something special radiates off of him. And, and, you know, so too Okada, so too a lot of other guys, but especially with Nakamura. Yeah, yeah. They, they, they put over the fact that uh, apparently he's influenced by, uh, they said, uh, 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 Freddie Mercury and Michael Jackson. Michael Jackson. And that presentation <laughs> was uh, his ring entrance as, as the king, what did they call the did they call him King of Wrestling king is, or king something? Of strong, king, king of Strong, king of strong Style. style. Yeah, which, which JR said, which he means, which means he is a badass. Which, <laughs> and, and then he said, like, I would never thought I would say that Michael Jackson and uh, Freddie Mercury and Badass would be sentenced in the same sentence. <laughs> it's tremendous. <laughs> Eamon, Eamon, I definitely want to get your thoughts on this. Uh, generally, what were your thoughts here? I know we, we talked about I think, even ever so briefly over on Andy Mayhem show last week. Uh, but you can give us uh, some of your thoughts here a week in. Definitely. Um, uh, I, I thoroughly enjoyed uh, the show. Um, and just the response from from people I knew afterwards that weren't ones that follow New Japan. Uh, I mean, guys like you get, getting messages from Chachi saying like, "I'm so sorry, I, I apologize." <laughs> um, was was really cool. It's it just it's great that it did open up um, to a lot of new people. I think that was the goal of pay per view and and providing this English friendly um, version of it uh, was to catch the people that were skeptical or, or weary based off of the fact that they were, weren't able to get it because of the Japanese. I, I think one of the biggest things that I saw from people who I know that watched the show that also um, uh, had been following New Japan for, for many years uh, and, and its rise was that they actually went more the traditional New Japan route mm-hmm. uh, and watched it on a New Japan world. Yeah. Um, in in the in the Japanese version, uh, because that's kind of I don't know if it's just the sense that that's what they're used to, you know, and and, and that kind of stuff. But I I would say the Americanized version opened it up to a brand new audience, and and to people that were like I said very you know weary because of the Japanese. Uh, and I like to think I like to really thank Max Stryker uh, specifically, but both him and Jim Ross for being able to get over the the characters and, and the complexities of the people involved, um, which I think people look at sometimes at that kind of style of wrestling and think, well, it's just wrestling. It's just guys, you know, who are any guys, you know, they could, they could be anybody just having a match, but there is complexities to these contests, to these rivalries, to the characters and the people involved that I feel like that I really enjoyed them uh, uh, getting over and putting it over well. Um, I, I overall, I match quality was phenomenal. I think uh, uh, on this on this card, uh, can't, as Joe mentioned, can't say enough amazing things about Nakamura and uh, Abushi. Um, and, and to attest to that MMA thing, uh, Abushi was actually another guy that just came off of uh, uh, you know uh, sort of a shoot fighting MMA sort of uh, route, uh, even though he is a high flyer. And, and and that sort of, I think, aided in this match, too. Like, kind of Joe mentioned, of, you know, the grittiness that comes with that kind of style. It, it I think, added a, a, a dimension to Ibushi's style that, that, you know, put him past, like, your regular junior heavyweight, your regular high flyer um, sort of guy. And and I really I really did enjoy that. I definitely love the never uh, openweight championship match between Ishii and, and yes. Kabe. Um yes. Phenomenal, phenomenal stuff. Uh, uh, having pe- that's another match that people just were raving about uh, to me, uh, and and for the right reason. I think that style has become very popularized um, in America today as well. That sort of hard hitting, um, uh, sort of uh, strongman uh, uh, kind of style, and I think that was a real amazing showcase of that. Um, and and I love seeing like the names you recognize. Like you mentioned, sort like names that you noticed and 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 saw and, and knew who they were, and I think a lot of people were impressed by some names that they didn't think they would be impressed by too. Um, I think a, bit, a super underrated match on that card was the eight uh, the eight man uh, interpromotional tag with uh, Pro Wrestling Noah yeah. that featured the likes of uh, yeah. that featured the likes of a Lance Hoyt and a, and a Davy Boy Smith Jr. and a Shelton Benjamin, uh, you know who these guys who make that transition from America to new Japan and, and really get to go all out and, and become monsters and become 
these larger than life things. And they, I think, put on a really great showing with uh, uh, the uh, Toru Yano and, and the uh, Pro Wrestling Noah guys. Um, overall, I think it was a really, really fun time. Um, you mentioned, mentioned maybe one of the things that I, I, I think I mentioned this maybe last week in the comments. Um, I, one thing I wish they would have had more was um, uh, going to like the pageantry stuff. I think they, I think obviously being in the Tokyo Dome and being, you know, in that size and that, in that kind of build, you had a lot of pageantry, but you didn't necessarily have the, uh, the entrances you had uh, compared to last year. Last year was, I think, uh, an all out showcase of uh, the new Japan's entrance frenzy that, that really um, hooked, a lo- hooked a lot of people and people saw videos and, and, and pictures from these things and saw, you know, wow, what is this? You know, uh, just like perspective, like last year we saw the debut of, uh, of Prince Devitt's what's his staple now is, you know, his body paint stuff. And then he had a very elaborate entrance with that. Uh, Nakamura's entrance uh, with uh, 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 gangs and gangs of uh, uh, exotic dancers. That's and- actually the one that I just found when I tried to look up Wrestle Kingdom 8. And yeah, there's just like like pole dancers going nuts as he's coming out here. That And there's fire. It, it's crazy. Yeah, I mean, Tanahashi's last year is another one that's super, I think, underrated and amazing. Uh, Kushida and Alex Shelley uh, rocking out the uh, DeLorean and then the uh, Back to the Future gear. I mean, like that kind of stuff. I I feel that people had watch who had not watched New Japan before had saw that on the pay per view would have been immediately just blown away mm-hmm. from another aspect. You know what I mean? Um, from from what I heard, I think they said they were running short on time. Like I think the show was yeah. almost five hours last year. It was a very long show. <laughs> And, and they and, said they wanted to just focus on the wrestling this year, I guess. Definitely. And I can definitely so, see that. Um, mm. uh, I would definitely hope that that kind of stuff is is something that they still kind of look towards and is that kind of presentation sort of stuff, which is so unique because mm. Japan is so de- unique and, and to embrace that. you know. Um, I, I definitely want to touch on You mentioned here briefly – um, we did get an email from Chachi about New Japan Pro Wrestling. I definitely want to get this. Oh, first of all, uh, uh, on the and we'll read this there too. Uh, Dear Indie Mayhem Show, uh, specifically Eamon, uh, I am sorry for every bad thing I've ever said about <laughs> non WWE wrestling. I will make an effort to watch more. Your friend Chachi, um, and to this show he wrote, "Greetings, Mayhem friends. I need to learn Japanese." Uh, New Japan Pro Wrestling is something I plan on watching more of after watching Wrestle Kingdom 9. This show is almost four hours long, and I enjoyed every single minute of it. Start to finish, one of the best shows I've watched. I will I, I will be honest and say that being the first New Japan uh, show I've watched, I don't really understand a lot of the stuff happening. Uh, however... It's still it, it is still extremely watchable. While I love good old Jim Ross, I'm not sure he's the one that should have uh, gotten to go with Matt, but still not bad. Can't wait to hear your thoughts, Chachi. Um, so yeah, a, a, con- a convert, and he's one of those guys that he he's a man of me. He's like you know uh, for not liking indie wrestling and 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 uh, uh, you know saying WWE is the way to go and, and and bashing on indie all these years. Now it's the thing that he enjoys, uh, or even NXT and all these alternatives that we've talked about for so long. Um, so we've kind of made a convert out of them but the product has really i think and 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 it's getting this buzz and 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 getting talked about hopefully in the circles that are of of wrestling fans that maybe only know the john cena's out there and know that you know this is an alternative you know um and uh and it was also mentioned in the chat room here um mac harlan's put in there and let me see if i can pull that link up again uh new japan's uh new japan pro wrestling's new series in america is debuting this friday featuring english commentary and a five-star tokyo dome match uh it's actually coming on asx tv uh for a 13 episode run it's going to be announced by mma announcer mauro ranalo and former ufc heavyweight champion josh barnett um, Direct TV, Dish Network, Verizon FiOS, and AT and T Uverse is going to be on. Uh, so, so there you go. There's an option there. So, so at least you know there's an English language show, even if you don't have the channels. You know you're going to find it on the internet. Let's be honest. Um, uh, so there is an option. So, so Chachi and, and everybody else, like there is an option because really, uh, uh, Eamon, you sent me uh, several Japanese matches in the past when you were trying to you're trying to expose me to some new stuff in the early days of Indie Mayhem show, and it was just so hard to really 
Like, I enjoyed the wrestling, but I need the commentary. Like, I need the full story. I need a Joe Dabrowski tell me what's going on, you know, to, 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 to know the stuff I'm missing, right? Yeah. Um, and, 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 uh, and, that's, and it's good that we're getting that adaptation. And somebody to explain to us the weird crap happening in the ring that we don't understand because it's a different culture, too. And, mm-hmm. I, and I thought Matt Stryker was tremendous for that, and mm-hmm. JR filtered it for the rest of us. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Uh, I, I, you know, for that, for those with uh, the availability to access, I think that would be a really great um, touching off point to continue with these stories and, and, and continue with, with how everything is transitioning with them. Uh, for those that don't get it, I, and that still want to keep on with this and, and still want to follow this, uh, this promotion, I would encourage the closest thing I would encourage is obviously you said like you know English commentary is very hard to to come by in those aspects. There are a lot of I, I know there's a lot of um, uh, websites and and different avenues and and even there's a couple of Twitter accounts I know that personally for the big New Japan events will actually uh, translate promos, translate mm-hmm. um, uh, 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 different you know sort of the Japanese speaking stuff. Striker actually of, referred to one of the websites too. I think I think he did. Yeah, uh, there, there's some really good stuff out there that will help you sort of, you know, at least get the gist of like some of these stories that are yeah. happening. Um, and, and I encourage you to seek those out uh, and find alternate mediums to sort of, you know, to to get to, you know, what you want out of out of this promotion, out of this experience. Excellent, uh, Joe. Uh, is there any uh, any last thoughts about Wrestle Kingdom? Uh, you know, what, is, what do you think the long lasting effects going to be on, uh, on on this show here uh, for the future of wrestling in America? I think it, it, it's too soon to say because I would love to see um, I would love to see this happen again. I would love to see Jeff Jarrett Global Force Wrestling. Um, bring new japan uh new japan's premier events uh, on such a grand scale uh more often and create that familiarity in the marketplace mm-hmm. um I, I think that's what new japan needs uh from here um you know contrast that with the uh the show on uh, on axs uh which we should mention for those that don't know is the network formerly known as hdnet Hmm. Uh, the hmm, station okay. that Ring okay. of Honor was on for a couple of years back, uh, and, uh, 09 to 2011. And Japanese, um, uh, and Japanese uh, MMA, I remember watching on there when I used to have the channel, um, which had a lot of that presentation aspect, like I saw with Wrestle Kingdom uh, yeah. last but, week. I mean, it, it's worth noting that program, from what I understand, is uh, um, it's recent footage, but it's 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 archive footage. Yeah, it's 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 some of the top matches over the past few years. So it's not necessarily going to be a chapter two for people coming off of Wrestle Kingdom. Um, Mm -hmm. You know, they'll have to whether it's New Japan World or whether it's another pay-per-view or just the Internet, whatever. uh, They'll have to stay abreast of things. But I would love to see New Japan continue to saturate that marketplace and um, and be that alternative. And, um, you know, watching this show now. Um, Wrestle Kingdom showed me that uh, um, there's definite potential in, in the way they can present this. And and after watching Wrestle Kingdom, I'm I'm even more thankful that I had the chance to uh, uh, to call the matches of, of, of so many of them: uh, Okada and Tanahashi, Nakamura, Watanabe, uh, Shelley, and Kushida, um, and and to do it while sitting next to Matt Stryker. Um, and you know, I could tell you firsthand experience how passionate Striker was about that product and is about that product, and and how much he can enhance it. And I'm I'm very excited for all of you guys um, to see that show from Canada. And I'll drop some hot news on you right now um, because very very soon that event, uh, New Japan Pro Wrestling versus Border City Wrestling, that myself and and Striker hosted, will be available via the fine folks at Sorgatron Media. Mm-hmm. But you'll, you you'll, know be, him. you'll be able to, to check out the digital download here on Sorgatron Media. You'll be able to check out uh, the DVD at Joe or hyphen Dombrowski dot com. Um, I've been talking to Scott Demore and uh, um, hoping to get this out by the end of the month. 
but as always, you know, stay tuned for more information. But uh, uh, I was very proud of that show. And I think that'll be a great uh, uh, to anyone listening to this, a great companion to that event as well. Um, and you can see firsthand, uh, um, you know, whether it's in front of 40 or 50,000 at the Tokyo Dome or whether it's in front of uh, a thousand people in Windsor, Ontario, uh, Okada, Nakamura, Tanahashi, Time Splitters just exude a big league feel and, mm-hmm. and bust their ass and work so hard um, and, and, and give you guys something that is so rarely seen. Um, you know, not to turn into a shill, but uh, Shelly and Kushida versus P.D. Williams and a young kid named Brett Banks mm-hmm. from that show may have been my favorite match I called all that year. Um you know, uh, uh, Okada versus Chris Saban was on that show. Uh, Nakamura versus Tyson Dukes. Um, so, uh, plus Booker T was on the show. Uh, so, a lot of really cool stuff there. Uh, so, through events like that, uh, their return to Ring of Honor coming up this May in Toronto, um, and hopefully more pay per views. And I would love to see New Japan right up there, you know, uh, prospectively with WWE, TNA, Ring of Honor lucha underground and just give that variety make the wrestling world a little bit smaller in terms of how far you you have to go to reach it and give that variety there are there are millions millions of jaded disinterested wrestling fans out there uh more people are former wrestling fans than there are current wrestling fans um there are ways to bring them back and it's obviously not what anybody's doing now but new Mm -hmm. japan is different enough special enough uh exciting enough it's got the momentum um i think it can do some great great things in this business maybe not even necessarily taking away from a wwe or a tna but uh, carving its own niche among its own audience maybe taking away from from mma or taking away from the old school WWF fans or whatever the case is um that should be the goal is to, to not compete with anybody, not reinvent the wheel, not overthink it. Just make New Japan as strong of a global brand as New Japan can be. Excellent. Excellent. Check out more. Joe Dombrowski hyphen dash to Joe hyphen Joe dash Dombrowski dot com. Not necessarily in that order. Apparently. I don't know. <laughs> Something like that. He's got a lot of great stuff going on. A lot of great uh, stuff that I've worked with him on. And uh, he is your uh perpetrator of swag uh wrestling swag there at the shows you don't have to be a fan of joe dombrowski to buy something from his table can i put that way no in fact in (laughs) fact if you hate my guts i'd encourage you to buy something anyway please (laughs) yes something everybody can get behind pizza we're obsessed with pizza and we like people that are uh also obsessed with pizza they happen to be up right right up to the road here supporting great podcasting in pittsburgh with pizza the three p's of any success. Slice on Broadway, sliceonbroadway.com. Best darn pizza, sandwiches, salads, money can buy. It's part of their philosophy. Uh, they make everything from scratch. They try to use the best stuff out there whenever possible, and they wouldn't be able to sleep at night if they didn't. And uh, you can check them out here. Like I said, right up the road here on Beachview, in, uh, in the city limits, in Pittsburgh, right along the tracks in the South Hills, as well as down, down on Carnegie, PA, and down on Main Street. You can check them out on Twitter at pgh underscore slice look for them slice on broadway on facebook on instagram and like i said slice on broadway.com and let them know you heard about them here on the wrestling mayhem show we're gonna take a break hear from somebody blast from the past that we're gonna be talking about talking to later tonight here on this tuesday and uh, we'll be right back with the big question this is the iwc world heavyweight champion international superstar mexican celebrity and filipino supermodel shima casanova zion and you're watching the wrestling mayhem show we are back and like you said uh right there uh, you heard a little bit from shima zion back when he's iwc champion and uh, of course now dj z on tna impact wrestling we'll talk a little bit about that re debut that happened Last week on Destination America, a little later in the show. But in the meantime, we have The Big Question. No, that's the wrong title. The Big Question. Uh, new concept here. And DJ Lunchbox, tell me about The Big Question. Well, Sorg, uh, at the end of the year last year, we we did an excellent episode that uh, quite unexpectedly led to some 
really in-depth conversation about professional wrestling in general. Mm-hmm. Um, just, just, uh, you know, what we, what we think about it and everything like that. And I, I felt that, um, remember when had run its course, uh, there's nothing, we're not remembering anything anymore. We're just thinking up shit to talk about. So, um, we're, we're kind of removing the pretense of that and just talking about things. So each week here on the wrestling mayhem show from, uh, from now until whenever it gets boring, uh, we're going to have the wrestling mayhem shows big question. And, uh, like I said, hopefully it'll spawn a little conversation about professional wrestling. Excellent. So this week's big question, the first one, which I actually wrote when we did that show and I was drunk last year. <laughs> But I held off because I, I felt like this could be a good conversation. Uh, all of us here on the Wrestling Mayhem Show love wrestling dearly. We've loved it for a very, very long time. But my question is, what would it take for the unthinkable to happen? What would it take to make you stop watching professional wrestling? Hmm. Wow. That's deep. That's a good question. Yeah. That is deep. Um, it would probably <laughs> wow. Uh, if if what we we have on Monday nights were all we had, then I'm, I'd be done with it. You know, if there wasn't if if indie wrestling d- dried up, if we didn't didn't have stuff popping up like Lucha Underground's and New Japan Pro Wrestling, if the landscape was completely barren, I think I think uh, I think that would probably that'd be it. You know. So if there was no variety, if it was just WWE, right, that would not be enough for you. Uh, WWE as WWE is, you know, without NXTs or anything like that, just kind of staying the course. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't think I don't think I would really stick with it at that point. There's not enough to to stay with me, you know. Um, and I wonder if the guys now, <laughs> I don't know if the guys now are gonna uh, um, have be a great nostalgia crutch for them to lean on uh in another 10 years like like we do now with the guys of the 80s and the 90s you know so yeah i i I would agree with you but um i i see younger kids now who uh get nostalgic for panic at the disco so i think (laughs) anything is possible (laughs) okay all right that green gentleman was a good song (laughs) (laughs) uh but bobby what about you um, I was thinking about it. Um, it probably if I like ran out of time to watch it, I would say, mm-hmm. which I, I, every Monday night I find time to watch it, you know, and, and, <laughs> and I stick with it. I've stuck with it since, like I said, from, from what hooked me was the, the, the barbershop window and I've been a fan ever since and I just can't let it go. <laughs> so I, I don't know what it would take. I, I mean, Something earth shattering. If if I lost cable and had the ability to not have cable anymore or internet, if I lived in a cave, that's probably when I <laughs> no not watch wrestling. I would probably watch squirrels wrestle or or, or mice wrestle at that point. <laughs> wow! So, wow. Yeah. anything anything get to fix anything, I anything, watch, anything? I have to watch something. Shove something else. <laughs> rock, <laughs> shove that other rock. <laughs> I'd hold him up and I'd go, Ata. <laughs> Joe Dombrowski, what would what would make you and you are uh one of the deepest wrestling guys? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, um, I, uh, and I know, I know we have some other people we've talked about that, that like have very much shrines to wrestling, but I, I, I've been in your place, Dombrowski, and, and the, I don't think you have anything not wrestling in your possession, it feels like. <laughs> oh, now don't forget about my Titanic poster now. Um, <laughs> nestled, I, nestled nicely I, between a prime wrestling and like a survivor series poster if i recall <laughs> I, I am in deep and i've been trying to dig my way out ever since yeah, um, it isn't to answer the question what would make me stop watching wrestling i'll uh, i'll have uh two answers for this a professional answer and a personal answer um firstly uh um the first thing that would have to happen would be for wrestling to no longer be a means of me to earn money Mm -hmm. um i feel uh 
it's imperative if you're going to uh, make a living or make any kind of money off of the wrestling business, you should be very in tune with what's going on, what companies are doing right, what are they doing wrong, what are the trends, um, how can you be different? How can you borrow something from somebody that is is, is doing well? How can you avoid um, mimicking somebody that doesn't do well? Um, you know, for me personally, um, borrowing um, inflections or delivery or, or presentation off of announcers, whether it's um, Jim Ross or Matt Stryker or Mike Tanay or Kevin Kelly or guys from the past or even Michael Cole. And there, there's, there's, everybody has something that I can take something away from to use it to make me better. Um, personally, um, if it, if it comes to older stuff, I, I, I can safely say I would never stop watching that under any circumstances unless I, um, had a very sharp conversion to the Amish lifestyle. Um, but I'm, I'm, I'm in many respects, I'm a bigger fan of eighties and nineties wrestling than present day. Not to say that's across the board and there aren't exceptions, but generally I think that's a fair assessment. Um, but the business is always evolving and we have to come to grips with the fact that while it's fun to complain and be, uh, uh, the bitter cynical people we can be sometimes, um, we aren't the target audience. Of, of WWE at least anymore. So I almost expect to watch the show and, and, you know, feel out of touch or feel like time has passed me by a little bit or feel like, um, you know, it's a bit too low brow for me. Um, you know, like Mr. Sorg had alluded to, there's still ring of honor. There's still Lucha. There's still Japan. There's still plenty of ways to, to wet your palate. Um, but the business is going to keep evolving. There's things on the indies. I hate, there are things that, that are, are on the indies that are popular that I hate, that I think make no sense, that I think are very counterproductive to the business, that um, are funny or cool in the heat of the moment, but I think have uh, long-term damage over the way people perceive wrestling or perceive how easy or not easy it may be to do wrestling. Um, if a trend goes to such an extreme where I can look at it and say, this is not the business I fell in love with anymore, um, you know, that part of the business, at least, um, then I'll have to stop watching. Uh, I know there are a lot of your old school types that started, that, excuse me, stopped watching in the attitude era, the ECW era, um, mm -hmm. because it wasn't the business they loved anymore. Right. Um, and I'm sure, um, there were a lot of your, you know, Dory Funk, Jack Briscoe, Luthez fans that stopped watching when Vince McMahon took, took it into, uh, uh, the mainstream in the mid eighties. So eventually wrestling will probably evolve to something that I just completely hate. And I don't think I would stop watching it completely, but I would definitely, uh, you know, maybe change my viewing habits to wherever my cup of tea ended up being, whether that was here or abroad. Excellent. Excellent. Um, we have on the line with us, of course, uh, the, uh, wonderful mad Mike from Poughkeepsie, New York joining us uh once again on the show uh he'll be joining us for uh, something a little later uh discussion as well with tna uh but uh what is your answer for the big question here uh that's a really good question um mm -hmm. i think i would have to od on wrestling <laughs> you just burn out no, on no, it like, no like i because honestly i almost got to that point okay a little bit when i was working with wwe um and we had to break down match like every second by second and segment and write about it and break out 10 second clips and everything mm -hmm. and i literally had to do that for just dog shit matches mm -hmm. <laughs> like <laughs> i it, if let me put it this way if i was still doing what i was doing at wwe and then coming home and NXT and the clear Lucha, clarify TNA, clarify uh, uh, you you were a logger for WWE for for a brief uh, point so you were you were, yeah, you were doing these uh, matches I put a lot of notes about, I, I worked at WWE for about a year and a half uh, mm -hmm. databasing a whole lot of archive wrestling footage so you're welcome for the network uh, <laughs> and no any, any people who enjoy the segment yeah. uh, skip buttons 
those are pretty much because of the segments that we clipped out. And everything. I don't know because I have some complaints about the segment skip buttons a little bit. Well, that's but... not. Enti- I didn't program. It. <laughs> I just made it easy for them to access the segments. But um, but yeah, if I had to come home from that job, and there was Raw, SmackDown, NXT, Lucha, TNA, and New Japan, and all that other stuff that I had to watch and consume. I might have just burned down uh, completely and stopped for a while. I don't think it would have stopped for good because, you know, it's something I got into when I was a little kid, like in my formative years. And that's it's I don't think it's ever going to truly go away. But I think I could definitely OD on it and burn out for a while and just stop immediately. Excellent. Also with us uh, again, he was with us for the uh, earlier talk of uh, Wrestle Kingdom. Uh, but Eamon is still hanging on with us uh, down. He's back in San Antonio, right? You're, you're back, back in the dorm. Antonio, I can tell yeah. by the hair that school has started, by the way. Yes, um, yes it has. But he's with us. Uh, what's what's your answer to the big question? You're another guy that's in deep. And, 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 and that's the thing with um, with with my thought process for this, because when Lunchbox said sort of a, a, a catastrophic, uh, you know, gigantic thing, it would have to be for you know. Me to stop watching wrestling. I, I don't know why my, my brain jumped to like, oh, murder, death. And I was like, well, <laughs> well, that's happened. And I, and I stuck on. <laughs> and I thought, well, drugs and, 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 you know, that kind of stuff. It's like, yeah, well, that's kind of prevalent too. And yeah, I'm still, I'm still watching. Um, but uh, I think kind of when Joe talked, talk, I mean, mentioning sort of, you know, working in wrestling too. Um, I guess one of the common phrases that people, a lot of people say when they're either a wrestler or involved in wrestling or, or whatever is that um, you do it until it's fun or, or you do it in, until it's not fun anymore mm-hmm. is sort of the, the thing that uh, people talk about a lot. Uh, and that's, I would like to think that's a philosophy that I would agree with and, and, and would hopefully use for you know my time in, in, in wrestling. However, that may go is that, you know, if I, as long as I'm having fun doing it, I'll, I'll still do it. And I think I can apply that to watching wrestling as well. It's just that I've probably, the, the thing that would keep me from stop watching it is, is if it just wasn't fun anymore. And kind of going to what Sorg said about how if there was just one thing, like, like if there was just one, like not to dog raw or WWE, but if, 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 we have the trends of Raws we've been having now where it's kind of a lot of the same stuff and and repeat, you know, rinse, wash, repeat sort of stuff, you know, and that that stuff isn't necessarily fun. And, and you know, luckily there are other avenues that are, you know, allowing wrestling fans to sort of have fun and, and, and be immersed in new things. So um, that would be the one thing is if we had – if wrestling, if the whole scope of wrestling in general just was not fun anymore, and and that that would kind of be the the deal breaker. Excellent. From the chat room and LB, I, I, you got to answer your own question too. Uh, we had a few <laughs> responses. Uh, Riz says probably if I ever lose the interest or if something bigger comes up in my life, I might have to walk away and maybe check up once in a while. And I think that's what happens to a lot of people that have like kind of passed on, right? Uh, they just kind of get out of it, you know. Um, like, I can't find time to do video games as much as I would love to, you know, in, in my if, case. If um, they're passed on, they're dead. They don't have to worry about no, it anymore. No, no, not not in that way. <laughs> not in that way. Uh, and Tony Garza says, uh, Rowan Reigns winning the Rumble. Fuck that guy. <laughs> uh, so that might be a short. We'll wow. see. We'll see how Rowan that part Reigns goes. Really uh, what, about you, uh, what about you, LB? <laughs> well, I, I, um, I've... I've thought about this uh because obviously because i've had this question for a while um but um i i was very close to doing this recently i was i was just sick of it and burnt out and real tired of wrestling and not being entertained and not you know finding anything or not finding much to enjoy out of professional wrestling i wasn't enjoying the product i was enjoying you guys i was enjoying watching the product with my friends and talking about it here on the mayhem show and things like that um and uh, like I said, I, I came very close to being just like, ah, whatever, I'm done with it. Um, but uh, uh, what I ended up doing was I kind of doubled down on it and 
I didn't stop watching WWE, but I started watching Lucha Underground and I started watching, you know, all these, uh, these other promotions that I could get my hands on. And it, it kind of reignited the flame. It reinvigorated things for me. So if I sort of, I agree with yours, if there were no other alternatives, that would be a huge turnoff. And if I didn't have you guys, if I didn't have this show, uh, this show goes a long way to, um, uh, enhancing my enjoyment of the product. Yes, nice. nice. And I and I hope that Thanks, buddy. that's not just for me. I hope that we do that for a lot of people. Nice. So uh, with that, hey, uh, so I, you know, I, I had this. I didn't really discuss this in advance, but you know, we were doing contests uh, weekly on the Mayhem Show here before the break. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I thought this would be a great opportunity uh, for people to participate and uh, and, and kind of check things out. Uh, so if you have an answer for the big question, what is something that would keep you uh, make you what is the day uh, when it freezes over and, and you will stop with wrestling? Um, do this. Get on Twitter uh, at Mayhem Show. Make sure you tag us and tag hashtag the big question um, and let us know. Uh, your answer to the question, and this week uh, you'll win a copy of, hey, last month we had a really big show, IWC's Winner Takes All, uh, a friend of the show, John McChesney, taking on Matt Hardy, DJ Zima Ion taking in uh, Sir- Sammy Guevara. If you haven't heard of him, he's a big name coming up in the Indies. You'll be hearing about him soon, I'm sure, as uh, well as a, a bunch of other guys. Great ladder match between Facade and Andrew Palace, uh, uh, both interviewed in the last year on the Indie Mayhem show. As well as, uh, hey, there's somebody named Joe Dabrowski on commentary on that one, uh, hanging out. Um, and uh, <laughs> uh, all kinds of fun stuff there. That'll be free. Uh, that'll be the, the uh, we'll pick a random somebody who participated in that. So at Mayhem Show, hashtag the big question, and let us know uh, what, would, what would make you stop watching pro wrestling at this point. Um, so what I that... know what Jen Carlin's answer would be. <laughs> hey, there you go. Dean, can... Dean hey. Ambrose retiring. <laughs> I'll tell you what, Jen Carlin stops watching wrestling any random episode of Raw. That's really? right. <laughs> Our Royal Rumble party has been canceled and more I'm times. Canceled. Than something that gets canceled. Well, this time, one of these times, I'm just going to show up and like, no, we canceled it for real this time. We're like, bullshit. Uh, <laughs> with that, hey, shout out. Speaking of awesome wrestling, like that winner takes all. I just put out the newsletter. I was a little behind. We, I put out a newsletter today where we have releases from that we put out in the last month from great groups like International Wrestling Cartel, Wrestling Renegade Alliance, Vicious Outcast Wrestling. The names I had on this one: Matt Hardy, of course, DJ Zima Ion. Um, of course, uh, 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 Sanjay Dutt, the current Cruiserweight champion over in RWA. Uh, Mickey Knuckles, really awesome uh, uh, addition to that roster. Uh, Tomoso, sorry, I'm going to mess this up. Tomoso Ciampa from Ring Tomaso. of Honor. Tomoso. Tomoso yeah. Ciampa. And all the other great names that we've talked with on the Indie Mayhem show. Um, all that available in the last month over at PittsburghWrestling.com. Also, IndieWrestling.us, as well as many of those titles that I've worked with uh, Joe Dabrowski on, including Montreal Theory. The four, the four uh, uh, was it suplexes that the PWI rated us? Uh, four suplexes out of five, yes. Four suplexes out of five, finding Zach Gowan. Uh, a, a great a great story. We, we got had the opportunity to put together there uh, about the, uh, the, the first one-legged wrestler. I don't know what TNA is doing up there. Um, but uh, all that stuff, great stuff, uh, including individual matches with IWC as, as low as 99 cents to go sample what's going on. Uh, so please go check that out, pittsburghwrestling.com and indiewrestling.us. A lot of stuff going on. <laughs> Canceled more times than Futurama. Yeah, um, I was just going to say that one. Uh, that's a good one. <laughs> Thanks, yep, Alex Carr. Right so back. with that, Impact Wrestling came back this week on Destination America. And I know uh, a couple of you guys watched, of course, uh, uh, Mad Mike, uh, you you guys did the mid, Midweek Wars. Wait, did you do it? Well, I was not on the Midweek Wars. No, Wars you were I was on the front line, sword. You were on the front lines, but there was a great uh, Tony Garza. Uh, I think Matt Carlin's and Riz actually did that one. So go check that out on the Wrestling Mayhem Show Master Feed. I'm sorry, Super Feed, uh, or of WrestlingMayhemShow.com. They talked about Impact 
Lucha Underground and NXT last week and compared them. Uh, we'll see what's going to happen with the format of that as, as things get shifted around here this we week. We have no idea yet. No idea <laughs> what they're talking about. So um, let me switch this up ever so slightly. So TNA returns this past week. Um, we'll be talking to a TNA star here on Indie, Indie Mayhem show here in just a few minutes. So I want to take a couple minutes to get you guys impressions of that return. Uh, what did you guys think of their comeback? Did they really kind of step up? With the reboot they kind of promised here uh, in the in their off time, uh, a- Eamon, what were your thoughts? Um, and you know, I'm, I I don't mean want the naysay too much about the show, but um, I I think a reboot isn't necessarily what I would call it. Um, they, they change certain aspects. I mean, they have a new commentary team, they have a new logo and, and a new set. Um. I don't see a new product, really. I, I see very much a continuation of what they had. Um, and, yeah, I, it, it felt like a, and it, it felt like an impact. Like, not, not to say, you know, obviously they tried to make it big. And, and, and you know, uh, there's, there was an artistic thing I liked to the uh, intro. But conceptually, conceptually it was kind of weird. Uh, for those who didn't watch it, it was basically... Uh, the heels and faces, respectively, preparing for the night in in very uh, uh, movie movie esque style shots and 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 stuff like that, and then all loading up onto two separate buses, and then arriving to the building, and then uh, starting a massive brawl, and then brawling all over the arena to start the show, uh, which was kind of weird, um, but interesting. And I'll, I'll give them that; it was different. Um, uh, as far as the rest of the show went, I, I don't like. I said I don't know if this is a reboot of their style or, or, or their way they put their shows together or, or, or any of those aspects. It, it really was sort of the way they've been going normally. Uh, and of course, uh, Mike, you you saw the, you know, the 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 first episode, and you were on the front lines. What what was your impression? Uh, uh, on both sides, because I know you attended a lot of the shows last year uh, with all those New York tapings. Uh, uh, what what do you think going into this? Do 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 do. Wow! <laughs> in both in both presentations. <laughs> no, um, honestly, I, I I just wanted that to be my first comment about TNA because they didn't reboot at all. No. Uh, they in fact did the exact opposite of a reboot. They continued a certain storyline during their best of episodes that aired at 11 p.m. on Christmas Eve and midnight on New Year's Eve. Hmm. So they did the exact opposite of what everybody and their mother wanted them to do. Mm-hmm. Um, that being said, there were some high spots. Uh, they brought back Awesome Kong, which is good. That was a good surprise that they yeah. kept on everyone. <laughs> <laughs> and Will just got an erection. Yeah, um, I saw video. parts of my penis that I haven't <laughs> seen in months. What, did they have red back. tassels on them? Did they have red tassels? Yeah, they were tucked in these weird little cracks that. Uh, I, I, anyways, anyways, anyways. Just hadn't <laughs> popped out in a long time. <laughs> the impact. And and they're already teasing. Uh, oh, we made an impact. <laughs> they're teasing Awesome Kong and Havoc, which, yes. That's exactly what we need. That's something new. That's something fresh. The rest of the show felt like the same old TNA that you weren't watching last year. Um, I made a joke uh, on the live Twitter stream of the first Impact that if TNA were a Pokemon, it would have only four moves. Heel turn, uh, heel, heel stable, title change, and swerve for the sake of swerve, or something like that. And that's pretty much all they did. Like, And the main event had three of those things. I know! They they made a giant... like, For all intents and purposes, Bobby Roode had the championship, what, a week and a half? Two weeks? Like, for all, like, if you don't count all the time they were off, it's ridiculous. And... Uh, spoiler alert, they're doing similar things with the X Division title. Mm-hmm. And and if your um, main heel stable 
is comprised of guys in hoodies. Some of them happen to be African American. Please do not call yourselves a clan. Oh. Yeah, they're calling themselves the Beatdown Clan. That is not a good name. Uh, that is not good marketing. Like, oh, really? You guys got the Beatdown Clan? What do they look like? Oh, they're a bunch of angry dudes in hoodies. No, not a good thing. Um, there, there wasn't really much... Like, the in-ring action is good, but that's never really been a problem with TNA. Mm-hmm. They just... They were given such a gift. And I, I know it sounds weird saying this, by going to a lesser network. They were given a gift that they could do something revolutionary with their product. They were given something that Raw would dream of having. Being able to reboot and start fresh. And they did nothing of the sort with it. They, like, I'm sure they probably think that turning Eric Young heel again and making Samoa Joe heel again and making Low-Key heel again and putting them with MVP and Kenny King, they probably think that's revolutionary. They probably think that's a reboot. No, it's the world elite. It's immortal. It's aces and eights. It's whatever other heel faction that they've had at the top of the scene. It's another struggle for power, as they do, seem to do every year. Yeah, And not only that, they have another heel stable mm-hmm. in, the, in James Storms' revolution who has, like, five members in it. Mm-hmm. I'd say at least half their roster, excluding the knockouts, half their roster are comprised of two heel stables. That's my and my biggest issue after the the turn and and the situation happened. I, I looked at TNA and I looked at their roster. I thought, who's their biggest face now besides Bobby Roode? Kurt Angle and Kurt Angle. Yeah, that's it. No, that there's literally anything, no other like. Listen, top if anybody can give face. us a good spin on this, it's got to be Joan Dabrowski. Um, I know you're you're in tune. What's going on, TNA? What what do you think about their return here and the, uh, uh, the the kind of reboot we had on uh, Destination America? Well, I, I agree that uh, reboot isn't necessarily the the best word for it. Mm-hmm. Um, it's almost like hitting unpause. Yeah, it, I mean, it had a bit of a facelift. I think um, I don't think anybody can say that TNA is not uh, somewhat of a damaged brand based on some of their past decisions. Um, To me, their biggest issue through their run, uh, at least from a product point of view, is always consistency. Um, They've been able to get a lot of guys hot, but they can't necessarily sustain that. The, they're, they're, uh, it's almost, it's almost like a, a, a childlike mentality where, uh, you get bored with your new toy and, and you move on to the next one. Um, and there's a lot of examples about the, the most run recent of the company being Magnus. Um, lately, uh, there has definitely been a, an, an upswing on the creative, in my opinion, um, a more emphasis on the in ring. Uh, and I think that probably started um, with Bruce Pritchard and this continued on through John Gaborik. Um, you know, there, there's a lot less bells and whistles and a lot less of the hokey, campy, um, you know, publicity stunts and, um, you know, over the top shock value for the sake of shock value type of deal. And I like the fact that they've cut down on that. Uh, and they've emphasized, you know, the tag division with the Wolves and the Hardys. And um, they've given the women some direction as opposed to just, um, randomly yelling and fighting each other in the back. Um, you know, Bobby Roode, Eric Young, um, you know, have been kept strong. Uh, EC3 and, and my boy Spud are doing some amazing things. Um, you know, I, I think there's a lot of positives to take away from it. And I mean, the biggest problem last year was it just felt like such a lame duck show because you knew, um, you knew the inevitability that they would be dark for a couple months. I think they, I think people behind the scenes knew that too, um, which is kind of why they would just stayed the course to, to, to get through what they had to get through contractually. Um, 
I'm intrigued by by the moves they made in chapter one. I, I've always been a fan of Josh Matthews. I think he's very underrated. Um, it felt like he was in position to be the guy uh, succeeding Michael Cole um, whenever that day would come. He was uh, uh, he's experienced, uh, good looking guy, uh, toes the company line. Uh, you know, fully trained and developed in their system and their habits and their buzzwords. Um, Josh was even uh, 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 joking on the air on the show about finally being able to use the word belt, um, which I got a kick out of. Uh, I don't know why uh, uh, that didn't work, but I'm happy he's getting the ball with Taz. Um, Mike Tanay is a legend, but um, if you need to freshen up the product and kind of get some of that i don't want to say past stink off of it but maybe that that stigma that uh, the show has whether deserving or not um then it's a smart move uh awesome kong return a very smart move uh, shake up the knockouts um i have reservations about the eric young situation um but we'll see um i don't think his prior uh, villainous role with World Elite, as was mentioned a moment ago, was using Eric to his strength. Although he did get bogged down um, in the midst of uh, being the only non Wolfpack member in a Wolfpack reboot, if I remember correctly. So mm-hmm. that was kind of odd. Mm-hmm. Um, so uh, I, I try not to judge until the story's been told. Um, you know, there were obviously a uh, uh, scaled down budget. There are a few production issues. Um, you know, if, if, if I was producing that show, you would have heard my voice very loudly from the truck about some missed shots here and there. Um, and it is what it is. Uh, I'm not going to say that uh, um, the Destination America thing isn't going to take some adjustment. It obviously is, but they've thankfully gotten rid of a lot of their bloated budget. They have stopped with the uh, uh, run before you walk mentality that I think slowed them down a lot. And if they can keep it consistent and logical and keep the focus on the in-ring product, um, you can have a great show for what it is. If you expect it to be WWE, um, it's not going to work for you. TNA shouldn't expect it to be WWE. Nobody should have that goal for it to be WWE. Um, if you expect it to be Ring of Honor, you're going to be disappointed because you're going to get, um, you know, not to compare it to New Japan, but you're going to get those those different styles to try to appeal to everybody. Um, so, uh, you know, I, I've rooted for the company since day one. I still am. I've got, you know, friends there. I've got acquaintances there. And, you know, I'm obviously a wrestling fan. And the better TNA does, the better it is for the business and everyone in it. Um, but, uh, you know, I'll be watching uh, uh, on Friday and uh, I'll be following what happens. And I, I think, uh, you know, TNA's outlook to me short term, this speaking as a fan, is stronger than my outlook toward the WWE product. Because of a number of reasons, uh, the least of which not being um, it's not a three hour show I have to sit through Um, and it it feels fresher and more energetic. So we'll see. I'm not going to write them off and I'm not going to sing their praises, but they've made some positive moves the past year, year and a half. And if they keep the consistency and keep the characters hot and compelling, um, hopefully they can rebuild some of the momentum they've had prior years. I, I think that's that's a, a really true point too. I, I as much as TNA, you know, get get dogged a lot on this show, especially as of late, comparing them to the WWE product. At least when I watch TNA, it's not, it doesn't come off as repetitive to me. It, 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 mm-hmm. it feels like different shows each week. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, whatever you may think of the quality, I, I think there's there's times where I sit watching Raw, and it's like I've watched this like. For the past couple weeks now, and we're, we're doing this again, and, and it just feels very uncreative. Not necessarily. People can, you know, say it's the biggest issue is is creative, not knowing what they're doing. I, I think it's the issue is creative, 
is just uncreative at this point. They they don't have a a I a motivation necessarily. It's a holding pattern. Very much so. I, I think that's the biggest killer right now. Um, and luckily I think for TNA they're at least at least when I watch TNA, I feel like each week I'm watching a different show. You know, whatever whatever I may think of the show. See, uh, I, feel- I, I I I tend to disagree with you, Eamon. I, I feel like the I feel like TNA has has shown me the same matches so many times. And I know Raw does too, but Raw's big events rumble coming up. I have no idea who's going to win the rumble. I have no idea who's going to win the championship match. Mm-hmm. TNA's big event coming up is lockdown. I can pretty much from from the two shows I saw, I can pretty much see exactly what's going to happen at lockdown. That's like, true. I think the, I am. It, maybe it doesn't come in a, uh, from an idea of any any perspective that they're going with. I think it may just come down to a fact that WWE, I mentioned this before, has too much content and, and way too much content. Stretched um, thin. Stretched way too thin. So yeah, well, same. Also, but Raw being three hours is not their, it's not their call. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, but, I but, think, but they but, are but they are also stretching out superstars main event, uh SmackDown, plus Smackdown. all that content, plus all the content on the WWE network. It's 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 stretched thin with what they have there. And, and you know they're not hiring enough or they have too much. So on that note, guys, uh uh thanks for you know, a little bit of our thoughts. We'll we'll keep an eye on we'll see how TNA develops here in this new era. Uh, on Destination America and, and 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 see what happens with that. Uh, so with that, uh, let's uh, wrap it up. We gotta get to it so we can talk to our uh, uh, guests here tonight for the uh, uh, Indie Mayhem show. Uh, so tell me real quick, what did you learn from wrestling this week, Eamon? Oh, brother, what did I learn from wrestling <laughs> this week? Uh, I, I learned it's a weird world when when Scott Hall. Uh, Gets to be the the replacement for the guy that can't physically make it on the show. Uh, I think that's a that's a that I love that that's the world we're living in now because I'm happy yeah. for Scott Hall. Um, uh, but it, it's it's an interesting world. It's an yeah. interesting world that we live in. Of course, Kevin Nash, yeah, because his domestic issues, uh, yeah. Legend, Legends contract uh, suspended until uh, his legal issues get cleared up. So, and not going to be a part of the reunion show next week on Raw. So, Mad Mike, what'd you learn from wrestling this week? Uh, I learned that Lucha Underground missed a huge opportunity by not making Sexy Star their first champion. Ooh. Yeah. Wow. I, because they could have done it and it would have been something that would have transcended wrestling news, I think. And, and there's, there's a group taking risks right there. Uh, the stuff oh, yeah. Is absolutely. Like, one of my favorite feuds in that is Masquerita Sagrada versus Big Rick. It's one of my favorite feuds. <laughs> in wrestling right now it's not even really a feud nice joe dombrowski what'd you learn from wrestling this week uh i learned that wwe is a lot like the indies in the sense that if they're going to advertise a major legend as appearing they use a promo photo that's at least 12 years old <laughs> <laughs> and in no way resembles how the performers currently look um hey, hey. i also learned i also learned as a booker that if you want to build a strong baby face in the year 2015, you need to give them catchy current phrases such as wham, bam, thank you, ma'am, <laughs> in their <laughs> promos, which is why I'm looking forward to next week when Roman Reigns calls himself all that and a bag of chips mm-hmm. before killing Big Show's Tamagotchi pet, hitting him in the face with Nickelodeon's gack, <laughs> and celebrating with a crystal Pepsi. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> Oh, Actually, I would love seeing Roman Reigns celebrate with a crystal Pepsi and just <laughs> turn to camera and go like, believe that. <laughs> Bobby I, just F. Want, Town. I just want crystal Pepsi back now. Bobby F. FJ Town, I'm going to push off the crystal Pepsi um, for a minute. Let, you, let me know what you learned from wrestling. I learned that, that that kind of stuff is not going to change because you know why? Vince McMahon does not read the comments. <laughs> Basically, he, he does not read our comments about the show. He doesn't care. So, yeah. Let's be on it. It's not his company anymore. Let's be honest. Yep. Uh, LB, what'd you learn from wrestling this week? Uh, I learned that uh, WWE is looking out for me, Sorg. <laughs> What's that? They're on my side. 
they are they're they have my best interests at heart because uh knowing full well that i don't appear to be able to stay up past the middle of raw anymore <laughs> uh they gave me a john cena match early in the night yep. so got that right out of the way got to see my favorite wrestler wrestle but lunchbox he lost doesn't matter I saw him in a match. <laughs> Bobby, I keep saying if there's no hate and there's no odds, what is he going to rise above? That's true. What is he going to rise That's above? True. Uh, and uh, this week uh, for the why did Lunchbox fall, in the middle, fall asleep in the middle of the Raw segment, I've learned that Roman Reigns' new promos have a pleasantly somnolent effect <laughs> for me. Believe that. Wow. Believe that. <laughs> wow. Um, I learned in in wrestling this week uh, that New Japan has an exit ramp from their matches. Um, and they knew. Hey, there you go. Um, so, <laughs> so it's like that. That's what I learned. It doesn't have to be I, deep. I learned that there was <laughs> that. Yeah, no, we, we had enough deep no, conversation in this show. But I mean, it reminds me back in the day when I used to play with my wrestling toys. Okay, last week or at the last pay per view party, um, I would always have a a a, a, a heel and an, and a face entrance ramp <laughs> to <laughs> separate. Them. Like it, yeah, it made me think of that. It made me kind of harken back to that. Guys, it's been I your love rest- when they did that with with the invasion where they had WWE and WCW entrance. Ramp. Oh yeah, that was great. That was great. And uh, and Sorg, Matt Carlin learned that Brock Lesnar decides when the future begins. Yes, he does. Yes, he does. I hope he has a big red button that he just will randomly <laughs> press when his contract is up, and it's like. Okay, the future is now. Guys, thanks for joining us. You can uh, follow us here at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Follow Basic Sickness for the great entrance and exit music we have for the podcast at BasicSickness.com. Drop us an email, um, of course, over at that email address. Good times! Good times at WrestlingMayhemShow.com and 412-206-WMS0 to have your voice be heard. And you can join us in the chat room here, just like that chat room right there. That chat room right there. It's all over the place. Um, at live.sorgatronmedia.com every uh, Tuesday night about 9 p.m. Eastern time. Riz learned that Chris Jericho has entered the body of Dean Ambrose. Huh. What? Um, no, I see it. So it makes sense. Um, okay, okay. Um, I think he just read some of Jen Carlin's fan fiction. Oh, uh, you can follow us at Mayhem Show on the Twitters. Look for the Wrestling Mayhem Show on Facebook and Google Plus. And please subscribe to us on YouTube, iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, and iHeartRadio. And big thanks to Mike Allen, keeping him up past his dead t- bedtime. Uh, at Mike Allen PR uh, on the Twitters, helping us with tweets and notes all night long. Thank you, Joe Nebraski at Joe hyphen dash dombrowski.com thank you at bobby f j town at amen to please join me on the indie mayhem show um at mad mike 4883 at dj lunchbox and i think i got everybody uh and everybody in the chat room thanks a lot mayhem out This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.